Hola, buenas tardes. Hello, good afternoon to everybody. So uh, we will start the second session uh, right now in uh, room uh, to bite uh, deliver of Open Expo Virtual Experience for this second part uh, with uh, Alastria. And uh, now welcome uh, Monse for this uh, second part. And I think uh, she will come here just activating camera and microphone, please. And you can come here on the stage with me. No, says he. Speak in English or, or lo hacemos? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, let's do it in English because this is the next session. We have been very proud to be supporting Blockchairs. Blockchairs is a program we have uh, launched. Uh, we are collaborating with, with other partners in the European community, like also in Nomini in, in Hungary and the, uh, in, in Germany, also with the Fra Frankfurt Business School, and here in Spain with Zavala and us, uh, Alastria, in our aim to be more and more international, more and more supporting Europe. Blockchairs is is a beautiful program because it's really linked to the mission that we have in Alastria. And I will I will ask first of all uh, Almudena de la Mata, who is the program manager from Alastria for this program, Blockchairs. After that, I will announce, and this is please take into account that you will be called to the stage, on the stage, the following companies. We will start with eProcess Met. And this is a beautiful, a fantastic setup around health. And this is, you know, this is the time of the, unfortunately, of COVID and health is critical. Blockchain use for helping us to be more precise in health is critical. I, I invite everyone to listen, the people of eProcess Med. After that, we will have Bol, Bolvero. This is a beautiful startup. They will explain us a lot about different topics, but mostly still eh, a small and medium uh, business. They can use blockchain for a very particular use. And Volvero is one of the examples. After that, we will call Aswin. Uh, please uh, listen. This is the third place you will be coming to the stage and we will listen you. You have a very beautiful purpose of value and we will listen at that after has been we will call hopu and and that's interesting is a new way of doing things and we will listen carefully 10 minutes what is hopu we will learn about it come together is the following one come together beautiful name for a startup in blockchain we will hear and i i will not tell you but i really think that you must hear this business value proposition. Apio is the next one. Apio, beautiful name. I don't know if I'm pronouncing fine and <laughs> finding this name. Beautiful in Spain. Apio is a, a healthy a healthy vegetable and we will hear what is their proper purpose. Still blockchain for small and medium companies. Bottom, we know for a long time this is one of the members of Alastia. We love them. They have been working very hard since 2018. And here in Borough Church, this is a, a way that go further, take further the, their, their proposal. We will listen at that carefully. And also we have other companies, but I will highlight the use. And this is where I will hear Ismael Arribas and we will hear about Claudia. Claudia is a new way of uh, understanding uh, assertivity and, and please uh, Ismael, explain us a little bit what is going to happen. What we'll be hearing, we will hear all this uh, proposition, all the speech, uh, elevator pitch of these great startups of blockchains, and what will happen? What will happen with Claudia with that? Thank you, Thank Monte, you. and uh, all the luck for all the participants today. And uh, even though all this entrepreneurship is really amazing. Uh, Claudia is a startup, and we are going to collect the collective intelligence. Uh, if you allow me the, the redundance, you will be anonymously uh, uh, in in an, in an open opinion by your fairness about which is the level of uh, the startups and SMEs that are going to present today and which is your preference from the lovely presentations we are going to have at the end of the session 
Claudia autonomously will produce uh, different kind of uh, digital evidences in three different blockchains. So we can demonstrate uh, different aspects and facets of the interoperability in accordance with the ISO, uh, ISO EIC uh, 17788, which I am very supportive of this conceptual point of view of interoperability. And the most important thing, we will track everything on Alastria. Exactly. So we now we will start the pitch elevator for all these startups, really good business proposals. And as I said, and Ismail presented with Claudia, we will track the feedback on them in a very anonymously and in the blockchain. So that's a very beautiful value for them and for all together to understand how we had feel about the presentation, how that can be improving and for sure keeping privacy. So having said that, I will ask Almudena de la Mata to join me on the stage to present what, what it is blockchairs, what's about blockchairs. Thank you, Almudena. Thank you very, very much, you and, and everyone. Uh, well, today you are here uh, as part of the Link to Chain program by Alastria. Alastria's most uh, largest number of members are SMEs and startups. And as such, there is a, a devoted effort to help them uh, in all the different ways, technological, business-wise, legal-wise, and, and linking to networking-wise. Um, and as part of this, uh, we created this uh, setup to also give entrance to all our blockchairs uh, companies. Blockchairs is a European Commission-funded program, which aim is to transfer, to help, to foster the transfer of blockchain technology to SMEs, to real, to the real European economy at the level of the SMEs. Um, and as such, uh, what it does is select technological companies, technological uh, uh, SMEs or startups um, that have built business cases, uh, blockchain uh, applied to other SMEs, traditional SMEs. So it's technological SMEs to uh, traditional SMEs uh, and building real use cases. Uh, we are uh, in, the, in the second um, phase of blockchains. We had a full package of uh, blockchain companies that have developed their, their use cases for SMEs uh, last year. And this year we are working with the, with the second set of, of blockchains. Um, we just had the, 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 the challenge. So we, out of more than 100, uh, applications we selected uh, 18 and yesterday they uh, competed they had a, they made a challenge uh, to to stay in the program for the second part and only 12 of them uh, made it and now we're going to work with them on different uh, issues they have access to the Alastria blockchain ecosystem and the Alastria network so they can use also the Alastria um, self-sovereign identity uh, we work with them on the business elements, on, on the, on the, they have specific coaching sessions uh, to understand what are their needs and get the specific help for each of them. We connect them to investors and to be possible business partners. And of course, they get funded uh, by the European Commission uh, in order to, to, to make their project uh, possible and become examples for other European technological companies that want to, to work for SMEs and foster European economy. So uh, you, I encourage you to go to the website, uh, blockchairs.eu, and, and you will see the quality of the companies that we have uh, here today and how it makes clear that blockchain uh, makes sense uh, in business. So uh, we uh, welcome um, our first one which is um, e-process met. Maybe you want to turn on your camera and mic, and then you will join me on the stage. Thank you very much, Armijos. Eh, Sebastián. <laughs> Thank you very much, Almudena. Could you hear me? Thank you very much for being here and share with us uh, your value proposition. Okay, uh, first I want to say, uh, Great thank you to everybody uh, with this opportunity. I, I mean, I want to, uh, I'm really thankful with 
uh, Monse for the introduction of our work. And I want to share my screen and I will show you uh, what uh, do we do. So, uh, e process med is a startup. Is a startup uh, dedicated only to do the digitization of medical process. We have a team that is specialized uh, with different surgeons and experts in technology of security and communication. Uh, so the the main problem or or one problem in in health is that when you are going to the to any kind of surgery you have to sign this paper this uh, informed consent uh, and this old paper is first is paper based second it must be storage in expensive places and it has to be between five to ten years depending of each country and if you live in paris or if you live in tokyo each centimeter of the places are really expensive and in the other hand the patient when is going to go to a surgery uh, they feel anxiety because he doesn't know what is going to happen. And in the third field in the, is the physician, because uh, when you are doing this, pay, this work, it takes approximately between 10 to 15 minutes to, to explain to the patient what is going to do uh, in the surgery. And if you know, it could last until one hour. So it's a lot of time. And sometimes, uh, and there are some articles that show us that these informed consent are lost around 10%. So it's a huge, a huge quantity of papers that are lost. And in some cases, when you lost your paper, and what, what I mean is uh, you have a problem, and a legal problem, and a patient say, I, I want uh, any kind of suit, so the patient go to the judge and the judge, the first paper that asks is about the informed consent. So uh, with this, we have developed a smart consent. A smart consent is an application that you could log, uh, each uh, surgeon or each physician could log in. Uh, he set up with the patient with the surgery. Then the patient reads a uh, general GDPR. Then the patient see the data of his name, the the age, and the date of birth, and then the patient see this, see a video that could last between two to three minutes, depending on the complexity of the surgery, where we explain in detail all the steps that the patient needs to go. In this case, a, woman, a pregnant woman it shows you that he is going to have pain. And we explained that the best idea or the best solution is having a, an a epidural anesthesia. So we explain how he's going to do during the surgery. We explained that he is going to be in the surgery room. And in this place, we are going to need first a blood sample, and then we are going to need some specific indications for doing a really good explanation to the patient. In this case, you see that the patient is going to take any kind of positions that improves the technique of the anesthesiologist. So with this, we decrease the complications. We, actually, we are doing two pilots. Uh, one pilot is in the south of Spain, uh, and another one is in the north of Spain. Then the patient accepts accept the accept the the procedure immediately he signed and finally he records that he has understood the the surgery and finally all this process is record using blockchain technology and we use blockchain uh, with one hatch in each pdf so with this uh, you know uh, with this we guarantee the invulnerability of the process our, our team is uh, it's a multidisciplinary team. I have put here a part of our team. It includes a committee, a scientific committee of physicians, 
uh, uh, business developed in as Carlos that he has more than 30 years of experience in developing uh, business. Alvaro that is an expert in cybersecurity and Leila that has experience in the medical field. Our actually we are in these uh, green zones and our tool it could be used around the world. What, it, what does it mean? If you were you're going to have an appendicitis surgery, it's the same in Russia than in USA. It's exactly the same. Uh, the unique thing that changed is the language, but everything is exactly the same. So according with this, uh, we have around our target or our market is approximately 8,000, uh, 855,000 places where we could be. If I want to explain in Spain, we could see that only in Spain, they, we have around uh, more than 300 hospitals in private, more than 400 hospitals. and where we are uh, more is in dentistry clinics. We have more than 20,000 places where our solution could be. So it, this is a, a video how that explains you how does it works. Informed consent is the procedure by which physicians inform their patients, ensuring they understand and freely accept the implication. And risks of the recommended treatment. Informed consent can cause anxiety and uncertainty in patients and Sebastián, si me pasas el enlace del vídeo por el, el chat, lo desplego para todo el mundo si lo tienes en YouTube, ¿vale? I think that the this is not understanding. Hola. Buenas tardes. No sé si si se me oye. Sí. Sí, sí, se te oye muy bien. Perdona, Philip. Creo que hemos perdido a Sebastián, ¿no? Hemos perdido a Sebastián, una pena. Eh, sí, we will, uh, we will alert to everyone in the blockchain team that please, if you have any video, uh, just give, give it to Philippe because it is better that she, he, he is going to push it through the platform. So yeah. if anyone that is coming with videos, please uh, send the link to Philippe through the chat, okay? Thank and you. just the link from YouTube, Vimeo, or Twitch. Uh, you can send it to me uh, on the general chat or on the private chat, and so that I will uh, launch it from uh, from the inside. And it could, if it could be at the beginning of the presentation or at the end of the presentation, better. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we saw that Sebastian. Thank you very much, Sebastian. I know the, the the telecoms in this moment is critical. So we have heard about e process met and we send about that. We will follow up in the in the net. We will put in the Twitter and also in our LinkedIn the video that you have been proposing to 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 send to everyone to watch to this afternoon, and and then we I move forward to the next uh, start up the next block chair that is Volvero. I'm going to call to the stage Marco Filippi. Marco, bienvenuti e andiamo. Grazie. The mic. You... Uh, sorry, Marco. Yeah. Great. Perfect. 
So thank you, thank you for having me here today, and uh, uh, thanks also to uh, Blockchairs and uh, the staff that uh, is doing uh, such a uh such a hard uh, uh work in this uh in the last week uh we you were uh, so engaged with us and uh, we realized that it was very difficult uh, in managing different uh, startups but you did it great so uh thank you and uh, let me share the screen uh, so i will try to show you something more about us uh, uh, screen through can you hear me and see the whole screen can you hear me very well <laughs> go ahead yes oh, great perfect so ladies and gentlemen i am marco flippi ceo and founder of volvero and uh, our uh, purpose is to enable democracy of drivers. Uh, fewer vehicles, but for everybody. So the perfect storm in the transportation uh, industry is here. And uh, uh, I am referring in particular to the strong high underutilization of vehicles. So there are uh, millions of vehicles parked in our streets uh, that uh, stay there for the 96% of the time. So think uh, about uh, your vehicle. If you are an owner of car or something different, you spent a lot of money in buying it and uh, you use it just uh, for uh, the 4% of uh, its time. So you are paying a lot for having it uh, parked there. But the same problem holds true for uh, car dealers and car rentals. So for instance, car dealers uh, uh, cannot sell cars anymore because millennials, uh, which are roughly the 40% of the workforce in the world today, are not buying vehicles anymore. They don't want to buy uh, such a, a goods, such an asset, and they prefer to spend their time, uh, in, uh, their time and their money in uh, living experiences. So things that uh, also the with the fact of COVID, uh, everything was magnified. So the increase in vehicle selling uh, will be much higher than this 30% that was expected to, uh, to drop in a few years from now. And also think about that uh, there is a, uh, there are a lot of public areas wasted for uh, uh, parking areas and all of this is happening while of millions of people uh, all over the world suffer because they cannot find an optimal solution in their mobility needs indeed uh, um, uh, the actual solution like public uh, transport uh, car rental and uh, the car sharing as it is today they are uh, pretty rigid not flexible and usually not reliable so the solution is Volvero, which is an app for connecting uh, dealers, uh, owners, uh, and car rentals with a community of drivers uh, while leveraging the most uh, advanced technologies for uh, improving user awareness. Uh, through our app, indeed, the owners uh, can list their own vehicles uh, and uh, drivers can find the most suitable one 24-7. Uh, why now? Uh, now it's a great moment for uh, this kind of uh, uh, solutions. First of all, because there are macro trends that are that are going on in the society. COVID uh, actually improved the, the possibilities for us because uh, people are dropping public transport and are looking for different solutions. So. Uh, car sharing, peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, B2C as we are, are uh, really the solution that uh, users are expecting. And also because uh, there are economical trends, so people, as I said, are not buying uh, vehicles anymore. And uh, you can see also the boom in sharing economy services. Consider that Airbnb, TaskRabbit, uh, or uh, Uber are growing their business uh, 
uh, much more uh, than uh, traditional businesses. And uh, also technology. Uh, so there were uh, some uh, technology leap in the last years, like uh, 4G, 5G connections, mobile phones, uh, and also the development of artificial intelligence uh, and the adoption of blockchain. So there is some competitor out there, and that's a good sign because uh, the market uh, is very interesting. Uh, and we, uh, in particular, are different because uh, two points. So first of all, we were able to develop our own insurance policy in partnership with one of the biggest uh, uh, insurance player worldwide. And our uh, uh, policy uh, is unique because, uh, first of all, uh, it applies to different kinds of ownerships. So private owners as businesses, car dealers and car rental. And secondly, because uh, through our insurance, we can cover not only cars, but also motorcycles and commercial vehicles. So this uh, insurance is really a game changer for us uh, and also the technology we use. In particular, when someone is using uh, the platform, we collect data that can either be driving data or other kind of data coming from the vehicle. We uh, take those data that are anal then analyzed by artificial intelligence. And uh, these uh, artificial intelligence software give us uh, scores that are then stored in the ledger. We use this score for uh, implementing gamification. So, for instance, just to give you an idea, uh, the better you draw someone else's car, the highest the rewards you will get and you can spend uh, that reward uh, in uh, for future uses of uh, Volvero or also uh, with our network of partners. But uh, the, the advantages of the distributed ledger doesn't stop here. So for instance, uh, it goes uh, well beyond this uh, because uh, through the distributed ledger, we are also going to provide smart contracts for insurance purposes so a little bit of us uh, we started our business uh, 18 months ago we want some uh, um, acceleration program here and there and also some grants of the european union we ran a test recently with the main car dealer of italy and we were able to develop this uh, insurance policy as said before so we were part of the last batch of the startup school of Y Combinator. And as you can see here, we also recently got selected by Startup Chile for uh, bringing our innovation also in uh, Latin America. In our uh, near future, there is the commercialization as soon as uh, COVID uh, will pass and uh, the expansion in a second European country and later in 2021, uh, more technology implementation such as uh, the one in the smart contract so this is a very complicated business but we are the right team to do that because uh, we uh, are able to cover different uh, uh, different areas so i am the founder and i have experience in finance i work for pwc and for autotech venture one of the main uh, venture capital uh, for mobility in the world. And also I was a Fulbright alumnus. So I got the chance to live in the United States for uh, more than one year and develop a good network also for uh, uh, a scale up uh, in our future. My co-founder has experience in AI and artificial, inte in artificial intelligence and IT, sorry, and has already uh, Two, uh, two exits uh, at his, uh, in his past. And the third person uh, in the management team is Stuart Meluish, our CEO and uh, entrepreneur in, uh, in uh, software. Uh, and he also founded two software development companies managing uh, more than 20 uh, developers. Then we have uh, three engineers who take care of uh, uh, also of uh, operations uh, and the business development and uh, a well-mixed advisory board with the marketing manager of Spotify. Uh, our Lorenza Morandini, she is a professor of Lewis Business School and our mentor, the president of Rotary Club. 
So the market size is uh, pretty massive, 200 billion worldwide, and we make money just retaining a percentage on each transaction. So that's very simple. And uh, we will soon start our commercialization. So after that, we will start our fundraise for $1.2 million. Uh, so stay tuned and reach out if you are interested in uh, uh, taking uh, uh, a city in our uh, syndicate, we already feel the part of it. Uh, I would say more or less, uh, more or less, the forty to fifty percent of the round, and the money will be used for uh, team enlargement, sales and marketing, and uh, for sure on product and uh, R and D. So that's it for today. Thank you for uh, um, for being here. I am Marco Filippi, and feel free to reach out LinkedIn or here you have our email info at volvero.com. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Marco. Uh, that was a very clear presentation in the within the ten minutes you had. So thank you for that, and also encourage everyone to contact you. And, and take it further. Congrats for this fantastic job in Blockchairs. And we will keep uh, having an eye on you and your company and your colleagues. And we wish that everything goes fantastically until end of the year. And next year, we hear more and more about Volvero. Thank you, Marco. And I'm going to call to the stage the next uh, startups, uh, the next Blockchair again. This is going to be right now, be prepared because we are going to hear Mirko Ross from Asvin. Hi, Mirko. We, we, wait, we wait you in the stage. Hi. Thank you very much. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, let me try to share, to share the screen. <clears throat> Hopefully this will work. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Okay, so uh, it would be great if you just can connect my screen. This would be helpful. And yes, uh, thank you very much for um, inviting me as well, and um, even like for being one of the selected startups uh, in the blockchairs program. So my name is Milk Ross. I'm one of the co-founder of Ashwin. And at Ashwin, we are building a solution to bring trust and security in the Internet of Things software life cycles. Now, um, let me just tell you a little bit why this is so important. Uh, I mean, first of all, we know that the IoT is uh, growing uh, tremendous, like from maybe today 30 billion devices up to 125 billion devices the next 10 years. And every application we can think of uh, is driven somehow by IoT devices. So it's everywhere, like mobility, smart cities, industry 4.0, uh, all the big data stuff can't be done without IoT. Um, but security in the IoT is already a mess. It's like when we are talking now, there may be botnets out there with more than one and a half million devices under their control. And even now we have shown this week there, there was a rather serious vulnerability which allows to take over IoT devices and there are about 20 million IoT devices affected by this TCP IP vulnerability. So IoT security in the IoT is already a mess. Now imagine, um, the mess with much more devices. So if we look at the current situation, it's something like there in the in the cybersecurity of IoT devices. It's the companies are building up their firewalls. You have this kind of compartments uh, where you secure from attacks from the outside. And then as a system administrator or artificial intelligence operated system, you're looking to the outside and you just watch this kind of zombie IoT devices arriving. That's, I think, the attitude most people uh, in the industries still think today. This is the situation, but that's not true. The situation is more like this. It's like uh, we can't scale up with this compartment stuff anymore. It's, we need other strategies towards IoT devices because um, the, it's too much, it's too many. You know, imagine a botnet with 1.6 uh, million devices, you are running a distributed denial of service attack, you have a massive weapon 
um, which is only operated by the TV devices. So um, something has to change. And as industry has failed in changing, you know, bringing back or bringing implemented security in IoT devices on simple things like patch and update management or how to secure them on life cycles, now regulation is We have in California since this year the California Cyber Security Board, which forced vendors of IoT devices to, use, to take reasonable actions to secure the devices. That patch and update management is one reasonable action. And in Europe, we have, for example, the European Cyber Security Act, uh, which comes with certification schemes for IoT vendors. Uh, they, and this will be implemented in the next two years. We have other stuff in Europe, like um, the um, the Consumer um, Act, which will protect consumers. Sorry, Nico. Sorry. Yeah. we are having some issues with your mic. So just check if your mic is fine because it's giving some noise. It's giving what? There is some noise, some metallical noise. I, okay, don't, okay. I think maybe it's your mic. I think normally not the mic is pretty, pretty. Do you still have some iPad uh, audio? No, no, it's more about the noise on when you talk. So maybe it's your headphones. Could be you can try with your headphones. So let's see. It's better? Yes, much better, much better. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Then let's do it that way. Um, so we have uh, like the consumer uh, directive will be, will be, um, uh, will be a new there will be a new regulation on this is ongoing so a lot of things will turn and will force vendors towards better liability and um, iot patch management lifecycle management of iot devices is one one key point of everything which is going on and that's why we have um, created ashwin so with ashwin we provide a solution for vendors to secure um, their devices and provide them an update uh, patch management system during the device lifecycle um, this includes a quick onboarding of devices. So we have a, a, a device management in there and even the possibilities to uh, apply patches and doing a patch management. We have a real-time report on the security state of IoT device and we have a blockchain and DLT powered um, backend where we store every action which is performed uh, on an IoT device with the software to provide a liability and for the insurance a trust lock. So how does it look like? It's we have our platform. What what do we do? The vendors are giving us our software file. We 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 wrap that securely in a container, and then we deliver the software to the right time to the right device at the right place. Then the update will be applied, and um, this, the device is creating a digital receipt, which will be then stored um, again in the blockchain as a history log. Um, if we look at from a longer perspective for for IoT lifecycle, um, it's shown here at the at the at the slide what we what we extend. You know what what we do is we you can completely trace and store every action which is done with a software which is running on an IoT device. It means something like if you deploy a software, if the software will become a certification, for example, from a TÜV or a DECRA. Um, when has the software been distributed to a certain device and when the software is running on an IoT device. And all these actions are stored then in the Ashwin uh, distributed ledger based system and um, you can ret retrieve every action which has been applied on an IoT device. And even you can use it to check if the software which is running on an IoT device is really the software which should run on an IoT device. What are our advantages? Uh, we are rather developer friendly on the integration. We are compliant to everything which is popping up with the strong European regulation there. We support a broad hardware stack. And if vendors are using our system, they can say it's up to 80% costs for this update and maintaining stuff in IoT. So how does it look like? So this is a, a, a report from our system towards device management. So you see clearly if your devices are in terms of vulnerability, how many vulnerable devices you have in your fleet, where do you need to exchange, for example, devices, or where do you need to apply updates? Um, and even here for a device, you can really have a look on a certain device and you see everything which has been performed with software on this device. And this is rather important for all the liability issues. 
Um, the team in behind, that's me and Chris, I'm the CEO. Um, I have a long experience as a cybersecurity expert and I've been installed in many committees and groups regarding cybersecurity. Uh, for example, uh, for the European Cybersecurity uh, Agency, ESA, I'm an expert at their IT cybersecurity expert group. Uh, it's my partner Sven, who has a long experience with ICT, uh, ICT development. Of, uh, of projects, um, even in IT, and Rohit, who is a better engineering. Mirka, we, we are having this issue with the noise. We, we, we cannot follow, I'm so sorry. <laughs> we, we, miss, we miss when you started to talk about the team, and yep. then it starts to be very noisy, the, the communication. So it's a really pity. <laughs> I'm so sorry for that. But it's really strange because there is nothing of it. Regarding my yeah, I I don't know. I, I think you were finishing almost no. So I think it's, you are also going to the end. So try to to just give the last sentence. And Marcos is indicating if you try to disconnect and connect again your mic. Your mic. Let's let's do that. Huh? Thank you, Marcos. Yeah, perfect. Let's do. Try to use your last sentence, yeah, okay. and we go That's ahead. Strange. Yeah, so just let me finish there with the... So we have a very experienced team. Um, we had done a, a amazing traction. So the company was founded in, or we, we've started development in the company. The first seed funding was uh, early 2019. And since then we, we, we did an amazing track on, on the traction. So we have piloted with really large uh, industrial customers, uh, our solution. Um, with our stra strategic seat investor, which is a large uh, company in the in the facility metering uh, business, um, we have been selected by PwC and by KPMG as one of the most promising cybersecurity startups uh, globally. But at KPMG, currently about they screened more than seven hundred. Um, so we are one of the eleven they have selected, and even now we have selected the block chairs. So, which is also amazing. So, um, I think we are doing a good traction. We um, we will start several pilots uh, within the next months as well. Now we have a big implementation on a smart city project, um, and then let's see what uh, the time will bring after the COVID stuff, and um, then we can go further with our uh, business development and traction uh, in the new year. So, my name is Mirk Ross. I'm the CEO of Ashwin, and thanks for your um attendance here and uh, please apologize if there were any audio problems thank you very much very much mirko it, it was very nice we had these audio problems but you solve it and um, for sure we will keep on touch with you and, and track again and hoping to hear you soon in next events so i i thank you for being here to this afternoon and also in name of all the community that is uh, is uh, having within alastra and within open expo so we will keep in contact mirko and and good job and let's go for it thank you so Thanks. i'm going to ask the next uh, blog chairs mirko and here i'm going to ask uh, antonio jara to join us Thank you, Antonio. We will. You are going to talk to us about. Hello. How, Can you hear and me? And I think yes, very well, very well. I lead you, leave you in the stage. Yes. So you, hello, everybody. So my name is Antonio Jara. And we are a company specialized in IoT. So can you continue with us? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So we have problems with the audio, that's right. Hear you very, very low. I don't know if it's because you are presenting and talking, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe if you shut down your video, it could be better. Okay, you, you hear now me better. Fine. Okay, now let me, let me now it's fine, now it's fine, go ahead. So can you hear me well now? Yes, yes, can you still yes, hear me well? indeed, go ahead. Okay. So, okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much uh, for the introduction. So, and thank you also for this opportunity of explaining blockchain in a practical way. So, Hopo is an IoT company specialized in gases monitoring. And what we are doing now is to move a step forward in order to provide the integration 
of all the different certificates that we do off chain or that we usually do offline in order to guarantee that we provide a higher trans, uh, transparency and reliability for all these different certifications that demonstrate that the different industrial areas are doing right things and and also being able to identify what are the different events or anomalies that are happening. So Hobu, uh, our mission as Hobu, Hobu means uh, it's a human-oriented products company. It means putting the user experience and value engineering in the middle. As I mentioned, we are a, a, an IoT company that we are day after day more focused on the regulation technologies in order to offer via our devices all the support to satisfy the different regulations and the different demand. For that purpose, first need, um, one of the, our strong uh, approaches is provide very high data quality to guarantee that any kind of uh, decision or action is reliable. And for this data quality, it's not just because I claim it, I need a set of regulation, certification, and different process behind in order to guarantee this is happening. For that reason, in order to do it that, we are using artificial intelligence, we are using IoT, and at the end of the day, we are getting this data quality. And because we want to demonstrate that we are doing properly all the steps and we want that our customer also can claim that is the reason that we need blockchain as our uh, pro, pro, as our network to provide this transparency. We are already in the market with some traction. We are already over 300 units in the market. We are sharing with together with Cisco and IBM the new data quality standard in IEEE. And we are also working open platform in order to guarantee that all the data and all, everything is integrated in an open way, like Fiverr. So the need and problem, and we are mentioning, since we have the coming out of Arhus, now there is a common regulation around the monitoring of emission from industry. We know that there is a big challenge regarding gases, air quality. There are, for example, in Spain, very specific regulations since 1919. And we have over Europe, over 1.6 billion euros in different penalties. And at the end of the day, we want to make sure that the regulations are put in place. And the most important, that also companies feel comfortable and safety and they don't suffer and they are not always with the current and continuous uh, challenge of having these potential problems of uh, penalties and also impacting the workers and the, and, the, and the nature. And that is the reason that the solution is integrating this IoT artificial intelligence, and this addition that we are used to do in Hobu, we are powering with blockchain because we are providing this certificate monitoring plus data quality in a trustable medium as blockchain. And just as a curiosity, we are using Alastria also as the network. So the, proposal, the solution proposed is clear. We are providing this regulation and monitoring and compliance. We are providing the different certification. We are providing the different event and anomalies in order to guarantee that we are supporting the regulation, but also the corporate social responsibility. And that is our approach. The solution per se, the first point is these sensors. Uh, there is one of the, 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 the sensors for continuous monitoring, prevention and detection of anomalies, as I mentioned, with certified data quality, and also with all the different existing certificates that we are digitalizing and we are on chain, transferring to the blockchain from SES as reputated at a global level, and also with the ICO, uh, ISO as at the baseline the certification program. We are providing a software as a service based on open source, as I mentioned, like solution like Fiverr, in order to provide this real-time compliance monitoring, this detection of events and anomaly. And the most important, because at the end of the day, it's a win-win for everybody, is the prevention. Because believe me, our customer industry are not interested in impacting in human life and they are not even much less interested in receiving some penalties or this kind of audits that they suddenly discovered some errors that they didn't know, in fact. So then blockchain is clear. It's the, the proof of trust and reliability for all the different technologies we are discussing, the opportunity to put events and anomalies in a non reputable way, they provide the, portent, the, the proof of availability of all these certificates and maintenance to demonstrate that everything is uh, reliable and we can trust in this data and for that purpose we want to provide this transparency for different actors auditors workers and also as a the corporate social responsibility and for that reason this is the reason of combination of, of a public permission network where part of the certificates events etc can be public and open in order to guarantee that everybody can understand it so an example of customer 
this, this one is a company working in thermoplastics industry where we monitor all the gas emission, where we get the certificate assessment, and they are doing two actions. On the one, on the one hand is the regulation satisfaction, like for example, monitoring the volatile organic compounds that you check in Google is the most standard uh, gases that are issued by industry, but also they are starting to do innovative opportunities, like for example, guarantee the safety for pregnancy and lactation in order to provide more equity in the in the in the factory and in the production plant. And this is also I think is nice because it's also this digital transformation is enabling for new generation use cases and new opportunities. So this is a real example where we can see the peaks, we can see the evolution, we can detect the different aspects. As you can see, this is a very serious stuff because every every potential peak can cause the cancer, genetic defects, skin irritation. So this is the kind of things we are detecting and monitoring. In fact, this is a real peaks and real pictures. Uh, and, and also we monitor other parameters like particles because also they are impacting in the different diseases, mainly respiratory, also dust, etc. For example, we are also extending for other industry related to particle and dust, like for example, building sector, etc. So this is like how the platform looks like. We have our own platform for this calibration, maintenance, configuration. We have all this opportunity to create this in link between IoT and all the blockchain network via smart contracts. And this is exactly how it looks like. We put in a, in a plan different mobile sensors that we are monitoring and we are issuing the IoT equipment, also the, all the certification. And after we have via a software as a service or the maintenance and also enabling this opportunity of calibration, the, the guarantee that everything is reliable and detect potential anomalies. And just as a last slide, just to, to give you for people more tricky about how does it work, uh, let me try to make it clear and simple because this is a very messy slide, but I think some of you more technical oriented would like it. So we have in the bottom of the sensors, the classical IoT layer that we are extending with the IoT platform based uh, in different components uh, like fiber. Here we are doing very important things like device management, like firmware upgrade, like for example, our college has been was presented, very important tasks to guarantee that the sensors are up to date and working. And beyond that, here is where we have all the opportunity to have all the data all the data and the quality control people, the different people can visualize and see all the data from the devices. But beyond that, then we have all the opportunity to integrate all the information from what is offline. That is our HOPU has their own certification and calibration laboratory. For having this laboratory, we need to do first a calibration service, but also we need to have a lot of certificate. These yellows are certificates that we need to have usually just printed, usually just in paper or PDF, but unfortunately we we can just link in our web page, but they are not just so digital or checkable and updated and just to verify that they are valid. And then this on chaining of all the certificates that guarantee that HOPE is able to do what we are doing. Second, we are also issuing all the related certification to specify for every individual device that we have all the process and calibration carry out in this uh, certificate I am uh, remarking. And finally, we have a smart contract where we have different users in order to keep all the status report, maintenance, event and anomaly, etc. So we have a collection of smart contracts, but at the end of the day, we are enabling that different users from auditors, workers, quality control people, and also hope as a technical support or any other one, we can offer this capacity of enabling them different access level, different opportunity to visualize and understand that everything is up to date. Sorry for this slide because I need this a little bit complex, but I think it's clear what, how it is working. And that is all. Thank you so much for your time. I think just in time and in the 10 minutes, I'm looking forward for any follow-up question. That is my email. I also will keep it in the chat. And thank you again for all your opportunity of speaking thank here. You thank you very much, so much, Antonio. Congratulations. How awesome your, pro your project. And really, really, as we were saying at the beginning of the afternoon, impacting socially everyone. So thank you for doing so. And, and congrats yeah. and keeping, keeping on going in this program in blockchains. We love to have you there and go until the end. You you know, this is also competitions and we like that. We like to, to make it happen and make it easier so much, and more sure. competitive. So thanks for that. And I will call the next one, the next blockchain that is on the stage. Be prepared. This is a, also very interesting 
option and opportunity and a lovely name come together this is lazarus Penter penteredidis <laughs> sorry for the last name so come waiting for you in the stage lazarus and looking after hearing about come together lazarus i don't know if you are around lazarus penteridis i think now i pronounce it right I don't know if you are there. If you are not there, let me call them and I will jump to the next one. This is Apio and this is Alessandro. I don't know if you are around, Alessandro. Thank you, yes, Alessandro sir. Kelly. So, bienvenuto uh, and we start. Thank you for that. Hi, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. I share my screen with uh, a moment. Okay, yes. Hi, everybody. My name, uh, uh, as I said, uh, uh, my name is uh, uh, I'm co-founder of Apio. Apio is not uh, the name of the vegetable in Spanish, but it's uh, in Latin, it's, it means uh, uh, connected, connecting things. Apio is uh, an innovative firm an Italian innovative firm that makes Internet of Things and blockchain projects. And nowadays, uh, I show you Trusty. Trusty is a project founded by, by Apio. It's, um, it's one of the flagship products. Trusty is, um, uh, can make the food industry turn from storytelling into fact-telling. I will show you how. Let me first share my personal experience. The food trust is broken. Uh, when I used to go to university in particular, I didn't care about quality food because my only thought was save money in order to buy more beers. After that, my food behavior uh, fortunately has changed and like 94% of people, now I search uh, trust search high quality food. Uh, I pointed when I discovered that uh, high quality food was composed by low quality ingredients. This is uh, uh, 30 uh, million dollar problems worldwide. The old continent is full of producers that makes uh, food with passion and love what they done. Uh, out of 300,000 company in Europe, one sixth are in Italy. Uh, nowadays, we are in a global supply chain. We, are, uh, we can have strawberry in December, but this luxury has a cost. Food has become, like you, say, like you know, has become more anonymous and more obscure. Uh, customers are willing to pay an extra cost in order to know provenance, origin of the food, uh, ingredients, and so on. And food producers are, um, are happy to share this information with customers. But in a data-driven world, uh, tell a story. Nah, they need to turn storytelling into fact-telling. And Trusty makes it possible. Trusty is the easiest and most secure way to share information alongside the supply chain and creating customer engagement. Trusty creates a digital identity for food products and generates QR code, a digital link, a web page in order to share information with the customer. Information that are notarized by blockchain technology. This information are inserted automatically with the Internet of Things sensor, IRP system, and so on. And uh, this uh, platform, the Trusty, offer to the um, to the cast to the food producers offline and online analytics and customers insight. The business model is a premium business model. Uh, Trusty offer to the food producers in a free way a product public page, the digital link, the dashboard to insert uh, uh, the data the notarization on public blockchain. And uh, the, um, the, the food producer pay for ERP integration, industry 4.0 integration, co-marketing, custom public page, and other blockchain integration, like, for example, Alastria. Trusty is the only uh, software as a service, free to use platform that is blockchain agnostic. Uh, the most important things is uh, our free to use approach. We are a trusty as born never, uh, one year ago. Nevertheless, the platform actually is ready and currently used and tested with paying customers. 
uh, we are focused on the users onboarding because one of the most important things of a freemium business model is the onboarding process that is easy and uh, um, easy for the food producers. And we have uh, um, two, pa two important partners, IBM and Var Group. In particular, uh, for IBM, we was the first IBM Food Trust certified partner. Var Group is an Italian SME with 10, over 10,000 customers in, uh, in Italy and 3,000 employees in Italy. This is our economics and it's not very interesting, uh, but this is uh, the blockchain program. This, uh, the end user SME that we have choose is uh, Mancini Pastificio Agricolo, it's called Mancini is a pasta maker that makes pasta and sell it worldwide. Um, customers uh, love Mancini pasta and Mancini want to share uh, uh, what they done, their transparency, that the pasta come from the wheat from their field, the field uh, near the pastificio, the pasta makers. And um, uh, Mancini uh, is getting bigger and bigger and sell pasta worldwide. And it's very difficult to share those information in uh, um, in, no, in a certified way. So we want to do that with Trusty. We want to do add uh, advanced trustability function like Internet of Things integration in order to uh, certify every single step in the process. In particular, we want to certify that the wheat from, uh, for, the, for the ingredients that makes the pasta comes from the, comes from the fields near the pastificio. And we want to create a custom public page in order to share those information with the customers. This is our implementation plan. We are started the onboarding process. Like uh, uh, Almudena said, we are selected for the, um, uh, for the second phase, uh, the third phase of uh, Blockchain's program. So we are very happy that we can uh, go ahead and we want to, to make this, this project reality and uh, make Mancini Pasta the first uh, pasta makers that uh, track this, uh, uh, these things on, uh, on blockchain technology, in particular on Alastia. Uh, behind the trusty, there is Apio. Apio is a venture builder that makes innovative solutions for large companies. Maybe someone of you knows uh, Lamborghini uh, or Acea. We are, uh, an import, we are an Italian SME that uh, uh, cooperate with this, uh, kind of, uh, of, of this kind of company. We are involved also in Horizon 2020 projects because uh, um, we are the first Italian company that makes a solution with the blockchain and the energy for uh, the important customers like Enel. The trusty startup team is composed by six uh, people. We are internally all the know-how, technical, and um, for the business part, uh, in order to create uh, smart contracts, in order to integrate Alast blockchain and so on. The teams work together since 2014, and um, in a six year, we lost uh, uh, a lot of milestones. We achieved a lot of milestones and tractions. Uh, our partner, like I said, was uh, IBM Italia, our group, and we wanted to use Munich, an important uh, Italian marketing uh, trust adoption. And that's all. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Alessandro. Really, really interesting, loving blockchain at an in the energy segment and also coming from Italy and this worldwide, but European for sure approach. So thank you for that. And the same, we the best for this thank fantastic you. blockchain program that you are doing. And we will see more over the next weeks. So thanks for joining us to, this afternoon and to keep on time. So we are here. Thank, thank you. you so much. And thank lovely so definition much. of Bye. Apio, join, uh, connect. So lovely verb in English. So <laughs> let's go for it. And I will go to the next blockchain on the stage. So be prepared because we are jumping to another segment of use. We are talking all these afternoons about using blockchain. This is reality. This is the use of blockchain. And this is not just a definition or designing. This is people who is there with their companies making blockchain a useful tool for all of us, for all the world in a more sustainable way. So now I'm calling and be prepared because this is, uh, we need to keep our time. And right now we are looking for the next one. So join us to the stage, please. And please, if you have any video, remember you, we need the videos to be sent to Philippe 
uh, and they and in the chat okay put it in the chat so i'm calling luis carbajo and he's coming from bottom so thank you for joining us and the floor is yours so thank you thank you very much monse uh, let me see if you can if i can share my screen okay yes A second or uh, can you see my screen Can you see my screen? We, we see all the screens, so yes, now now is fine. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. So first of all, thank you very much for this opportunity. Sorry, Luis. Yes, but yep. Sorry. It's fantastic. Excellent. Hello? Can... You can go ahead. Yes, perfect. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Let me just one second because I think that I have a problem with the screen. One one moment. Okay. Let me see if I share my screen. Okay, that should be better. Can you see my screen now? Okay. We'll, Excellent. We'll think that it's okay. Okay. So uh, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity, and I jump uh, right ahead. So our business case is very similar to Apio, uh, with a different taste. Uh, so I think that we are in the right track, as there are so many companies in Europe that are working on bringing solution to this space. That means that there is a problem, and when there is a problem, we think and we believe that technology can bring very good solutions to it, and this is why we are here today. So uh, for in terms of let me see if that pass. Okay, right away. So, Botun, um, we are a company that will have developed a data traceability platform into the blockchain. We have been already working with very big brands, especially in Spain, in different um, in different sectors, from utilities like Naturgy to financing with Banco Santander and others, and also to the with the food industry, with uh, very well-known brands here in Spain, and some of them that has uh, international presence, like Borges, that uh, for which we are doing also a project with uh, is related to Italian Italian products. Um, the technology that we are using for our data protection uh, traceability platforms are several into the blockchain. Uh, part of it. We are working with Ethereum, Anastria, Hyperledger, Oracle, and Quantum. And I will explain why, why we are using so many technologies in, in just a second. The project that we are presenting in Blockchairs is a great um, example of blockchain empowerment. So we are working with Eden Fresh, that is a consor consortium of eight fruit producers uh, from Spain that are selling their fruits to, to European supermarkets, mainly in the North region and also in, in United Kingdom, and that they want to bring very a, a transparency and, and the possibility to show the origin of their products and the quality of their products to the, to the European consumers. Uh, we were able to convince several producers, just not telling them um, that blockchain is cool or it's a technology that can uh, do a lot of things. We were basically telling them that they can solve very specific problems that they that they faced into their sectors. They don't know so much about technology, but they know a lot about the sector and obviously about the products that they are selling to the supermarkets. What are the problems? The first of all, in their in the sector, there is fraud and when there is fraud, uh, that means that there is an issue of uh, transparency and, and, and trust, right? Customers, the reality is that customers want to know the origin of the food. Um, there are a lot of labels that try to, to solve this problem of trust, but quite honestly, the customer is really confused. They don't really know anymore what means each of the labels that you have in any package. What they need is trustable information. And in the other side, in the other side, basically the producers, they really want to know how they can show the quality of their products in a trustable way to their customers that are an important part. And also what data they can also uh, use to improve their supply chain processes. And in the also in the authority side, when in a in a world where we see that uh, the health issues could go uh, so quickly and so badly, traceability of problems like food, po food poisonings is also very important. Um, with our product, if one of the supermarket that will be using the products from Edenfresh has a food poisoning problem, they will be able to 
ref to find and identify all the batches that has been involved on that specific uh, problem in seconds. Literally, that is a huge improvement in in the health part of, of the of the ecosystem. Um, how we are doing that? So, Button is, as I said, as a, plat a platform that basically it's used to track data from uh, different um, users. In this case, it's are the food producers and other actors in the ecosystem of uh, food supply chain, and put all this data, important data, in the block in the blockchain. Um, we use already a user interface that is very easy for non-sophisticated customers like could be SMEs that are working on this space. Uh, the platform is scalable and it has already all the APIs, so we are able to connect with the, all the main ERP systems that has been uh, available in this specific sector already. The important part about Button is that we allow interoperability. So we pro we provide tools where these uh, companies can use. Um, DLTs or, or private blockchains such as Alastria in which we are working for basically putting the data, have a performance that is really good and cheap and also mix that with another public blockchain if they want to show even bigger transparency of the, of the data. Um, this is how we look, what it looks like the supply chain process with so many actors and with so many data that is um, um, produce. We are in this project. We are going to capture the certificates of origin the, of the food, the ownership, uh, planting treatments, analysis, a lot of information that could be really interesting for the end consumers, but also it are really interesting for these actors to improve some of the steps of the process. The benefits for Ned and Fresh are clear. They would like, to, and they are going to uh, strengthen their brand image. They will provide transparency to the consumers. They will be able to show the quality of their products, but also very important for them, they will have a tool that they will allow them to do real-time real track and trace management of their food and their products. For the consumers will be obviously uh, very clear the benefits. We will be able to see with completely trustable information from where the, inform from where the food is coming from. Um, we will be having a QR code that with just a smartphone, we, they will be able to show you all the information that is available. The QR code that you have in this presentation already is working. So if you scan that with your uh, smartphone, you will see the example that we built for the Spanish ham with PricewaterhouseCoopers on what is the kind of information that we can capture and show to the end consumers. Unfortunately, we don't have time for that, but here you will have it if you want in, and you shoot me an email uh, after the presentation. We are looking at a bigger, a really big market. Um, we have over 600,000 organic food producers in Europe, and we think that we can capture over the three, the next three years, the 10% of this market share that represents a hundred million opportunity when we are talking about the food industry certifications of software side, chain software management software. Um, it's a big opportunity and we believe that our particular approach to the market and the easiness to, to use our tools will bring these uh, food producers to the platform. Obviously, we had competitors. Um, main ones, IBM, as we were seeing in the previous presentation. Uh, there are also another verticals, but we think that we show some uh, specific advantage compared to this um, these competitors. The main one also uh, what we believe is that the, the possibility of interoperability in different platforms and also the APIs that are basically very easy to use and integrate with the current systems. We are running our software as a SaaS. We have the uh, a model with setup, licensing fee, and scalable fee plans. And here you have an example of the prices that we are charging to the people that will be using our, our technology. Uh, for a small MS SME, we are pretty reasonable to use a very powerful tool to show their software or their know-how to the to the end users. Uh, we are a senior team. Uh, we are already uh, 12 people working at Bottom, and and uh, well, we keep um, uh, working hard to try to see how we can make all this uh, project uh, possible. So that's all on my side. Uh, here you have the previous QR code that I was mentioning before. Um, there is also our contact information here. So once again, thank you for this opportunity. And as I said before, we are 
really, really happy to be selected at was on, as one of the companies on blockchain. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luis. Uh, I love the presentation again, Bottom, and also congratulations for this selection on the on the blockchain program that all of us we are enjoying. So good to see you again and good to see you pitching today. I I will like uh, to highlight now that I will call to the stage to Ismael Arribas once more. Please, Ismael, if you can join me, we will explain about what is going to happen in the next minutes. And Ismael, I, I don't know if you can join me in the stage. Uh, I'm calling Ismael because Claudia, as we said at the beginning, is, is, a, is a tool, is a tool in blockchain. We are using blockchain, we are using, in this case, the net that is in Alastria. And what we are doing there is just uh, going to ask you uh, no, Ismael, you are going to explain us. It's going to be some ask questions, very clear, about the pitch that we have been listening over this afternoon. And that will be a value that you we will be giving to uh, Claudia just to get this value and deliver this value later on to the startups. Uh, Ismael, I will leave you, I hope you can connect because I know you must be having problems with connectivity, maybe. Mm -hmm. But just for the rest, uh, to after Ismael will call you. Do you hear me? Ah, yes, fantastic. We can hear you now. We cannot see you, but we can hear you. Oh, sorry. I don't know what <laughs> happened with my screen. Now I just saw you. I don't see the space. So, uh, yes, uh, Claudia is ready. Uh, following very, very attentive. Uh, these fantastic uh, presentations from different perspectives, uh, common points of view at somehow, and really all of them in the blockchains and Alastria ecosystem. Uh, basically, uh, Claudia is a DAO. We have just one use case here. We are exploring oracles and many kind of things that you can figure it out when you participate. So we encourage you to participate. Uh, we are just uh, going to give a very simple question about the quality of what you saw. We are neutral. We don't have any point, extra point for all of you, but uh, it's just uh, for the courtesy of the audience as well uh, to have their opinion and give it to you their feedback in a very simplistic way. And as you will see upon the next uh, two presentations. Thank you, Monte. Thank, thank you very much, Ismail. I will let you the floor. Uh, now you are coming to the floor. Vestigia first with uh, Jose Manuel Avelino, and after that will be Remedios Gonzalez. Uh, last but not least, with the token builder. Dot com. I will just give you the stage and I will say goodbye to all of you. Remember, you can keep connected in this fantastic virtual experience open expo together. There is lots of rooms and after uh, we will meet you in the networking later on. So I just say you hello and welcome to the next startup and let with you the, the master of ceremonies in this case is going to be Ismael. Thank you for that. And hello, Jose Manuel. Welcome to pitch in, in Open Expo from Alastria, also one of the startups that started from the beginning with us, partnering Alastria and loving, loving to have you in the state. And congratulations for this blockchain program. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Nice to be here with you and share a little bit uh, our technology, uh, what uh, we are doing. I'm very happy to, to be one of the startups that uh, jump into into the second step of uh, blockchains. So uh, I'm Jose Manuel Vestigia, and I think that we can start with a case of use, uh, and is this the use case that we present in blockchain? So uh, inside video, I think in English we say like this. I hope you enjoy. You can put the the video with uh, also with Philip. Oops. Chat. You can put the video in the in the chat. Okay. It, it, it seems that the video is in private mode. 
so I cannot uh, access to the video. Yeah, so uh, so I can share if you want. I can launch a uh, hearing share video. Yeah, okay. because it uh, doesn't work. Uh, it's uh, put that it's in private mode. Okay. This video. Sorry. Okay. I seen it, but thank you, Philip. Now, could you see? It's like uh, on a standby. Do you hear me? I think you need to change the uh, privacy of uh, your video on YouTube to make it possible to access it through a link. Uh, if you have the link, uh, so I we can access to. Uh, if you can do this, we can uh, put it at the end of the pres of your presentation. Okay. Uh, if you can follow with your presentation, and we'll do it at the end. If you can change the the privacy settings. Or, uh, or probably we can uh, we can support on another way, Jose. Hello. We are going to make a little break, five minute break. Okay, so you can uh, Hello. solve this problem, okay. and in five minutes we come back with a live and the three uh, projects uh, that we need for at the end of uh, these blockchains. Okay, thank you very much. See you in five minutes here for the live and we will solve the problem with Juan Emanuel. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> 